Welcome to our Liturgy of the Word this Pentecost Sunday, boys and girls. I do hope you've all had a good half-term week. Today, Pentecost Sunday, is 50 days after Easter Sunday and marks the end of the Easter season when we joyfully celebrated the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The colour that we use on Pentecost Sunday is, would you like to guess? That's right, red, which reminds us of the coming of the Holy Spirit, when small flames appeared over the heads of the disciples. This event changed their lives forever, and it has changed our lives too. It is an event which marks the birthday of the church. We can't attend Mass at the moment because we're all doing our bit to keep each other safe. Where did you participate in Mass last week? Our family tuned in to Mass from our cathedral in Southwark with our Archbishop John Wilson. The candle here is the new Paschal candle from the cathedral, which was lit for the first time at Easter. In a moment, we're going to begin our Liturgy of the Word. As we can't be together in the same room, why don't you pause this video and ask your parents to light a candle at home now. So why, boys and girls, do we light a candle? We light a candle to help us to remember that Jesus is the light of the world and is with us when we are together in Children's Liturgy of the Word. Today, Pentecost Sunday, I've lit seven candles because the Holy Spirit appeared above the disciples' heads in the upper room as small tongues of fire. We light seven candles as they remind us of the seven gifts the Spirit brings us. So, are you ready? Shall we say together? We light our candles as we start. Help us, Jesus, as we say. Welcome, Jesus, in my heart, always there to stay. When we come to Mass, we always begin by thinking about the things that we have got wrong this week. And we do this so that we can say sorry. So why don't you just close your eyes a little at the moment and spend a little bit of time thinking about what it is you got wrong this week. Have you perhaps had a fight with your brother or sister? Have you perhaps not wanted to share what you have with others? Perhaps you haven't listened to your parents and done what they asked you to do. We are here now with Jesus, who is our friend who loves us. We ask him to help us with the things we find difficult. Shall we sing together? I have come to say sorry, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I have come to say sorry and make a fresh start. And to ask you to help me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. To be kind and forgiving with all of my heart. Having said sorry, we can now give glory to God who is in the highest with a really glad heart. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria. In excelsis Deo. Before we read the Gospel today to hear what Jesus is saying, let's remind ourselves what happened last week. Well, actually, we're going to go a little further back than that, to 10 days ago. 10 days ago, on Ascension Thursday, we remembered that Jesus, having spent 40 days appearing to his disciples, after his resurrection, was taken up into heaven to be with his father. You could say it is the day he began working from home. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, the apostles, together with Jesus's mother Mary, returned to Jerusalem, to the upper room. Jesus promised he would send them the Holy Spirit so that they would have the gifts they needed to tell others about him. They had to wait for 10 days. They didn't go out and they spent the time in prayer. 
What happened on the 10th day was a remarkable event that changed their lives and our lives as Christians forever. And this is what we're about to learn about. Today, we're going to listen to two readings. Our first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, which was written by St. Luke. It tells the story of the beginning of the life of the church and what happened at Pentecost. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The disciples had gathered together in Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost and to wait for the Holy Spirit that Jesus had promised to send. One day, as they were praying together, the room was suddenly filled with the sound of a powerful wind which roared through the house. Then what looked like small tongues of fire appeared and spread out to touch each one of them. So it was that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. At once, in their excitement, they rushed outside to tell everyone what had happened to them. As they began to speak, they were amazed to find that everyone listening to their words could understand them. People from different regions and countries were astounded to hear these men preaching to them in their own native languages. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we read from the Gospel, and this week is from uh, the Gospel according to John, we greet the Gospel with the Gospel acclamation. So join with me. Listen, listen to God's word. God is speaking, he is near. Alleluia, sing his praise. Alleluia, hearts we raise. Fill us, fill us with your love. Send your spirit from above. A reading from the Gospel of St. John. Late in the evening, the disciples were huddled together, feeling sad and afraid. The doors of the room were locked to stop the Jews finding them. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the room with them and said, Peace be with you. They were amazed when they saw him and could hardly believe their eyes. But Jesus showed them the wounds in his hands and where the sword had pierced his side. They were filled with joy and wonder. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. Just as my Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them, saying, The Holy Spirit has been given to you. Whatever you choose to forgive will be forgiven. Whatever is not forgiven by you will remain unforgiven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. spend a little bit of time thinking about what Jesus is actually saying to us. Do you remember when we began, I said that what happened to the disciples in that room on Pentecost Sunday changed their lives and it also changes our lives too. Let's spend some time thinking about how that actually happens and why. In our first reading today, can you remember how the apostles knew the Holy Spirit had come? Think about that for a minute. Can you remember? Yes, that's right. They heard the sound of a rushing wind and saw small flames dancing over their heads. Do you remember how they felt? So remember, they were locked inside a room because they were afraid as they'd seen Jesus ascend into heaven just 10 days earlier. Jesus had left them and they were worried. And actually, can you imagine being in a small room with a strong wind and small flames? It 
wouldn't have been quite what they were expecting. They must have been quite startled. Now, what effect did that coming of the Holy Spirit, the wind and the flames, actually have on them? Did they remain afraid and worried? No, boys and girls, they didn't. Do you remember, they couldn't wait to tell others what had happened and share the good news about Jesus. Think about the last time you got a wonderful gift. What did you do, boys and girls? Did you keep it to yourself? Or did you want to tell other people about the gift that you had received? So remember, the disciples had been given a gift. And that was the gift of the Holy Spirit. And they were now filled with God's strength and courage. They'd become a people of joy. Not only that, they could speak in the languages of everyone in the crowd that had come to hear them speak to them about Jesus. Now, this wonderful event marks the beginning of the Christian church. The disciples became members of the church because they had received the gift of the Holy Spirit and their lives were changed. Boys and girls, how is it that your lives are changed? Do you know how? You too have received the gift of the Holy Spirit when you were baptised. Your parents would have been given a baptismal candle when you were baptised. Perhaps they can show it to you today. It would have been lit from a paschal candle like the one you see here. And it represents the coming of the Holy Spirit into your lives. And you too, boys and girls, have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. To remind yourself that it's Pentecost Sunday today, you might want to pause the video now and make this headband. Look, I've got one here. Now you've got a choice, either you can cut one out or you can uh, cut out uh, from the printout and then colour it all in. Um, you'll see that it says on the headband, it says, happy birthday to the church. And maybe you can wear one all day to remind yourself that it's Pentecost Sunday. So now, boys and girls, we're going to say the creed. Remember that the apostles rushed out of the room on Pentecost Sunday to tell people what they believed about Jesus. Shall we pretend to be in the crowd and show that we too believe? So I'll ask you some questions and you can say, I do, Alleluia, Alleluia. Do you believe in God the Father who loves you and sent his son Jesus to save you? I do. Alleluia, Alleluia. Do you believe in Jesus, the Messiah, who sends his friends out to tell others about him? I do. Alleluia, Alleluia. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, who has been with Jesus' followers since the first Pentecost and is with us today? I do. Alleluia, Alleluia. Do you believe that the church is one family and that one day, you will share everlasting life with God in heaven. I do. Alleluia. Alleluia. And now we pray together, just like the apostles did in the upper room. Jesus, you send out your friends to look with concern on the world. And so we pray. We pray for missionaries everywhere, that they may be filled with courage as they are all sent forth to tell others about you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole world, that everyone may come to know about your saving love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are feeling weighed down by any bad feelings they have, that they may know your forgiveness and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and our friendship groups, 
that they may be places of kindness and generosity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, fill us with your spirit and guide us as we live our lives as your disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us, boys and girls, for your children's liturgy of the word this week. Goodbye and God bless.